Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP, and I wanted to do a reaction to uh, Dulles' uh, video. I already sent a comment to him uh, about his latest video on the uh, kind of malaise uh, that he's been feeling. Um, uh, malaise is, oh, it's a, it's a nice word in French. It, it means that you, uh, to be, is is to be at ease, and mal is like bad, so is to be bad at ease. Um, that just sounds better when you're saying it in English because you're. It it sounds like a fancy word when it's actually not really a fancy word in French. Um, but anyway, Dulles made a video about that, and he he made two introduction videos to them. I forgot what the first one was about. The second one was about um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and how constructing a story was a big part of it. Um, and this video he made last was, well, it, it was about different topics, but it was how he'd constructed a story about his identity and his life and how he realized that the idea that he'd had about his life and the struggles that he'd faced and the problems that he'd had to and the things that he'd had to endure um, were created were, were because of his weaknesses that um, he had put himself into these situations and that and that each type has their own struggles um, and create their own problems through the fact that they misjudge things that they aren't good at or used to or the things that they prefer. They end up misjudging the situation and creating a problem for themselves. Um, and like, I agree with that because I guess that when I was growing up, um, I had an idea of myself and I realized with time that maybe that wasn't really uh, the, who I am. This goes a little bit back to um, the discussion I had with my INFJ friend when we first met about who constructs your identity. Is it you or is it other people? And for me, when I first met my INFJ friend, I was totally convinced that I'm the one who um, creates me. like. I have my own identity. What I think about myself is who I am. But my INFJ friend, when we first met, thought that no, um, it's what other things, other people think of me that is who I am because they see me more objectively. They see me from the outside. Um, and the truth is obviously more complicated than that. And with time, I think that my position and his position have moved more towards the middle of that scale. Uh, it's both you and others that determine who you are. Because you could be missing out on like flaws that you have or uh, things that happened or stuff. Uh, well, and so other people need to be brought in a little bit. And at the same time, you actually... It's not, you're not just like an entity floating around in space. You think for yourself. And so you're, you're creating your own identity. Um, so that, that's kind of a sidetrack from Dallas's video. But um, I think it's important to say that this is a question that concerns INFPs more than other types. Because we construct a narrative of our own lives. And that's a kind of an important part of being an INFP is constructing the narrative of our own lives uh, because that's where FI kind of spurns from. SI as well and the N, E, and T are what gets us out into the world but they're not really concerned with like the social sphere, the FE, and they're not concerned with the physical sphere, the SE. Um, every, the, we have SI so we're concerned within ourselves about the sensory experiences. But we're not very good at seeing ourselves very objectively because of our function stack. Um, but that's okay. So that's that's where my stance comes in. And that Dulles 
talked about how well he thought that he had had to endure so many things throughout his life. I mean, his childhood, it seemed a little bit similar to mine that he thought that he was, he had like a good childhood and then something happened and then people were against him and then some challenges happened and then he had to struggle and then with time he's learned to accept himself and, and others more and then things got better. Um, and the same thing happens to me where when I was little, uh, everything seemed bright and beautiful. And then I started being bullied in school and then it got bad. And then I started hating people. And then I started uh, realizing that people uh, were against me and that I was um, special uh, compared to all of these other people who were all trying to fit me into some box. And then with time, I realized, well, that's not true. Um, I'm not special. I can, um, I could have done something. I wasn't completely helpless about the bullies. I could have said something. I could have um, gotten into a fight or whatever. I could have told people. I, I did try to tell the adults, but the adults didn't really care, so I did try, but it, mostly I was very passive and I was just avoiding uh, these bullies rather than going about what my day without like fighting against what the bullies wanted, which was to keep me quiet, you know? Uh, so I could have done things. Um, so I wasn't completely helpless. I wasn't... Um, I didn't have a terrible um, late childhood, um, early teenage years. I, I had all the basic necessities that I needed. I had uh, loving parents. Um, and I did have friends. I, I didn't have many friends, but I had friends that were close to me. That can lead to some problems, as Dulles said, that we went with these very deep connections, which leads to problems often. But uh, it's also the beauty of being who we are, you know? And I think that we're making a mistake if we say that we are the reason for our own problems. Because, yes, it might feel like, okay, you're taking control over the situation by doing that. But then you're also blaming yourself for everything that ever happened to you. Sometimes things happen to you. Sometimes sometimes it wasn't even happening. It just you happen to be there and things happened, you know? And sometimes it's okay to be passive. Sometimes you can't act because the acting would have led to really bad consequences. Imagine if you'd stood up to that bully. Yes, maybe. That bully would have stopped, but maybe that bully would have been spurned on to uh, attack you even more. Um, that is possible. Um, they, I mean, if, um, or you could have gone the opposite direction if you had um, realized that your problems with the bullies is because you weren't fitting in, you were dressing too weird, or you were acting in a weird manner, you could have decided to assimilate with everybody else. But then you wouldn't have been happy because you wouldn't have been uh, yourself and you'd been hiding your own self for years. So things could have gone in very different ways, depending on what you did. And also when you're a child, you don't have all of the mechanisms, you don't have all the experience and stuff to make the right decisions. And you can only operate in the way that you know best which is um, our cognitive stack. Um, so if you're an INFP, you can only, like a lot of INFPs, their coping mechanism is to uh, uh, escape into a dreamland and not take concrete action. But that's okay. We are all just children at that point. 
So to blame ourselves as children for what we did is really mean to ourselves. And I think that we need to have some self-compassion for who we were as kids. Otherwise, we'll never really actually heal. Um, and I'm saying this as somebody who doesn't really have trauma. But I think that it goes doubly as much for people who have trauma. Because it wasn't my fault that I was bullied. And I refuse to believe that it was my fault. Yes, I could have done things differently. Now with my adult brain, if I, if I had my adult brain as a child, I would have um, done things differently. I would have tried to befriend people at clubs. I would have tried to, you know, well, at clubs, at, you know, and different activities I was doing. Um, I would um, have tried to speak up more. I would have tried uh, other things. But when I was small, I didn't know how things were going to go for me 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. I mean, I, I didn't have the tools yet. So... I think that we need to be nice to ourselves. And even if you made the decisions, uh, the, the things that you regret are things that happened when you were an early adult. I mean, I'm not the same person I was when I was 18. Maybe I made some stupid decisions when I was 18 and then blamed other people on it. Like saying, oh, medical school is terrible and, you know, it's... Um, I'm a cog in the machine and everything. And the system is wrong. And I am just a poor little INFP in this world, you know? Yes, okay, maybe that's kind of deluding myself into thinking that something is true when it really is false, you know? I'm not just a poor INFP in a system. I could have chosen to not become a doctor. I could have chosen to do something completely different and um, not had to deal with this problem. Um, or I could change my perspective and realize that, well, what I'm doing is helping people and um, I'm not just being a cog in a system. Um, and I'm not more or less of a cog in a system than other people, so it, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's not part of who I am. I'm not a resistant, you know? Uh, you could make that into your narrative that like, oh, I'm the person who's resisting against the big bad society. Um, but the thing I think that saves us as INFPs is that we can imagine a lot of scenarios for ourselves. I think that we're not just set into one scenario, even though, yes, we do stick to one scenario. Um, I think that with age, we mature, we figure things out. And we don't need to completely abandon the narratives that we made for ourselves when we were growing up. Um, because to some degree, they, they are based in reality. We, we're not completely delusional um, when we're kids. Like, the stuff that we base our stories on has some kind of basis in reality, as it was. So, um, yeah, I think that it would be kind of trying to unroot yourself completely would maybe damage the structure that you have inside your head. And yes, maybe, maybe we should completely deconstruct ourselves. But I think that there's a certain beauty in the way that we, in a mismatched way, manage to construct our sense of identity. It's probably not perfect. It's probably pretty um, subjective and, and unrooted in reality. But that's how it's supposed to be. Because we're not gods. We don't, like, know everything about ourselves objectively. Because we inhabit a body, we be inhabit ourselves. So of course we're not going to see each other from ourselves from the outside, looking in. We can't judge others either because we don't see their insides, so we only see the outside. 
that we see uh, at a certain point in time with our perspective on things. If we were gods, we'd be able to like see 365, 360 degrees around a person from top to bottom through every, like a CAT scan, you know? And be able to see everything about a person. But if you see everything about a person, you also can't construct a story. You have to create a pattern from all that, all that data. You need to be able to create a story. I think that that's important for INFPs. Maybe other types don't need to do this, but I think that we do need to create a story about our life in order to live it. Um, and it's not totally harmful. I mean, it's not harmless, but it's not totally harmful to, to do that. Because our, that's what gives us a reason to live, is having the story, wanting to construct the story. So I think that we have to be okay with the fact that we created that story. It wasn't completely just stupid shits that we made up when we were kids. I think it was also a pretty important way for us to survive and, and to thrive. So, um, yeah, that's what I had to say about that. Um, tell me what you guys think. Um, I don't want to in any way discredit Dallas's video because I think it was really good. And um, he took up something that I had uh, been struggling to uh, describe. Um, because I have, I've also had to deconstruct uh, the way that I'd uh, viewed the stuff that had happened to me. But um, I think that there's another layer to the story as well. So yeah, tell me what you guys think. Bye.